Okay. Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to MIG Monday. Today we're going to start another project that you can do at home uh, quite easily, actually. I think that you don't necessarily have laying around the house, but you can obtain pretty cheaply. We went to a junkyard and got some rims for about 10 bucks a piece, and what we're going to do is make a fire pit. And what I'm, the way I'm going to kind of work this out is I'm going to take, we've got actually three different sizes. I mean, you can use whatever sizes are available to you. We're doing this because one fits inside the other, which fits inside the other. We have a 16 inch, a 15 inch, and a 14 inch. Now the 14 inch is going to be separate from the other two pieces. I have a piece of, piece of material sitting here I'm going to cut into a circle and put in the bottom of this, of this piece. And this is going to serve as an ash pit. So once it's in place and that bottom is in there, all the ashes from the fire will collect there, and then you can just lift the other two off and dump the ashes and, uh, without making too much of a mess around your patio or your yard, wherever you're going to have this. The idea is the other two pieces will fit on top of the ash pit. Now I'm going to have to cut out the lug area of the, of the, of the, uh, of the rims, and we're going to set one on top of the other, and that's going to end up looking something like this. And then we're going to cut a, 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 an access door to put in your wood or your charcoal, whatever you're going to use as a burning substance. And then at the top you can have a grate or you can just sit around this and enjoy the heat in the evening and swap ta tall tails around the fire. So that's kind of the idea. And what we're going to do now is we'll get started with the, the cutting and uh, the things that need to be done. Recognize that these are from the junkyard. They're, they're horribly rusty. Uh, rather than take them out and have them sandblasted and cleaned. We're just going to kind of deal with it as we can, and when we get the finished product, we'll clean it up. All right, so let's get busy. Okay, all right, our first step now is, this is pretty rusty and grimy, and I'm going to use the plasma cutter, and of course you have to have a good electrical contact for that. So what I've done is I've gone and I've used a grinder with a wire brush on the grinder, and kind of just cleaned up a spot where I'm going to do my cutting so that I get good contact. This is the top piece. This is our 16 inch rim. And I'm going to be cutting out this center section here uh, because we're not going to need that. We're going to have a, a grate or a grill over this or if you're going to not do that and just sit around the fire, just an open spot for the fire. So uh, I'm going to cut this out and uh, we'll start, start our project. All right, I'm about to start to do this plasma cut. One thing I do want to remind you, we already talked about having a conductive surface for it. Uh, but we also, you want, you know, this comes out as a figure is a straight line shot of, of a hot arc that's going to do the metal cutting. So if you've got your plasma cutter tilted too much, you're going to burn through the side of this, which we don't want to do. So we want to make sure we keep it straight up and down so that we're just cutting out the center section without perforating the outside wall. All right? So that's... Give this a shot and see how we go. All right, there we have a center section cut out. Step one is finished. Uh, we can grind that, dress that if we need to, or we can just leave it be. It's gonna be the inside of a fire pit, so it's not gonna be you know, cosmetically important. All right, let's move on. Okay, we've cut the center section out of the one rim, and now the next step is to weld the two rims together. That's gonna to be the bulk of our fire pit. Uh, this is so rusty and with mill scale and rust and crud that there's no way I could, would want to try to weld through this, so I've got to clean this up a little bit. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, even before I try a grinder, I'm going to see if I can clean it up with a, with a wire brush, uh, you know, a power wire brush. Uh, but it's going to make a lot of dust and crud and dirt, so one of the things I'm going to do, just for my own comfort, is put a mask on, which I suggest that you guys do as well because it's going to be breathing in a lot of rust and, and crud. So 
uh, if you're a little health conscious like I am from a safety standpoint, it might be a, a darn good idea to wear a mask of some type if yours are as dirty and cruddy as, as mine are, okay? So let me get this on and then we'll start cleaning up. I finished grinding the area where I'm going to be welding on the, what's going to be the top, <clears throat> the top 16 inch wheel. Now this is the 15 inch, this is going to be the bottom piece. Uh, where I'm going to weld is around the edge here, the top edge, and then the outside because that's where the weld bead is going to go. So I want to just make that sure that's clean so that I get a good weld. So that's what I'm about to do right now. All right, I just finished grinding some, some of this heavy rust and mill scale off of these things so that I can uh, have a good contact point for making my weld. Um, one of the things I should point out too, uh, this is gonna be a fire pit, so before, off camera what I did, I didn't even think about it, but I, also, I pried off all the lead balance weights that are gonna be on here because you don't want that in your fire pit. And I also pulled out all the valve stems out of these rims. Uh, you don't want to be cooking a burger or something and having it smell like burning rubber. So you might want to take care of that as well. Now also, because I'm welding on a lot of really dirty material here and you know, it's, you've got a lot of nooks and crannies, it's hard to get all the crap out of there. What I've done is uh, I've switched over to a flux cord wire uh, because that allows me to handle rustier, dirtier plate. And even though I ground it, uh, this just, just kind of helps make sure that we overcome all those things so we have a successful weld all the way around this, these, these uh, rims, all right? So uh, I'm also down in this groove, and it's going to be a little tricky to get there because if i I got to weld down, but I also can't let the wire touch the edge of the thing because it will short out on the edge. Uh, so it's a little bit tricky, but it can be pretty easily done. Just be careful. So uh, let me get, start doing that, and we'll see what we get, all right? Okay. All right, <clears throat> what we've done so far now, we've got about a five or six inch weld in four places around this, these two rims to hold them together. Uh, but we, now we have to cut a spot for a fire door, some place where we can put our wood or whatever our burning material is into the pit. So I've kind of guesstimated maybe about a 10 inch opening ought to be able to take care of most wood and stuff that you're gonna be burning in something this size anyway. So what I did, I've just drawn a, about a 10 inch line here as a guide and I'm going to plasma cut a line here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom side. 
another um, line in the same dimensions, uh, parallel to the top line, and make a cut there. And then I'm just going to kind of cut across and cut this piece out. So this entire piece right here is going to drop out, and that'll be our opening in our fire pit. All right. So I'm going to use the plasma cutter for that. So here we go. All right, I've made my cut. Now, you might have noticed a, different in the arc, a difference in the arc. The first couple inches made a sound, and then all of a sudden it got brighter, and, and you can see sparks starting to come through. The material where it was coming through was thinner, so to correct for that, I'm just going to go over that same spot again so I can burn through that area, all right? So bear with me, and we'll get that taken care of. Okay, now I'm going to make what you're actually going to be when the thing is standing up, my vertical cuts. Uh, some of it's going to go pretty smooth, but I'm going to have a couple places here where I have double thicknesses. So uh, the, the arc may not cut all the way through on the first or second or even third attempt. I'll just have to go over it until I actually cut through everything. So we'll give it a good shot and here we go. All right, I think for the most part, we got that one. All right, this should be the last cut for our fire door. And again, we we'll, might have to go over a couple places where I have extra thickness of material. Here we go. All right, so now we have our fire pit door to be able to put in, to stoke the fire, put wood in and whatnot. Uh, next thing I want to do, however, uh, because it was just plasma cut, I want to take a grinder to the four sides here to make it more user friendly so you don't cut the back of your hand or something reaching in on some sharp spot. So I'm going to do a little grinding and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, 
So we've, now we've got it ground relatively smooth so we don't snag our, cut our hands and stuff if we're feeding the fire. All right, we've completed the fire pit portion of our outdoor grill here. Uh, now the next thing we're gonna work on is an ash collecting piece. And again, we're using a, 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 another rim. This one happens to be a 14 inch rim that when it's sitting down, the fire pit will sit right on top of it. We don't have to attach it because the weight of this will keep it in place. And this will collect our ashes so that you can have this on your patio or someplace where you don't want ashes all over the ground when you're done using it. Uh, you notice, of course, it's a rim, so there's a hole and everything in the bottom. So what we're gonna do to make this an effective ash collector is we're gonna cut a piece, a round piece of sheet metal and drop it in here and tack it in place to, so this actually will catch ashes and not uh, get everything all over the place. So the trick is gonna be to cut a round piece of sheet metal to fit down inside there. First thing I did is I measured the inside diameter where I want the piece to sit and it turns out it was a, happened to be 11 inches. Uh, that may vary with the whatever size rim you happen to use, of course. So now the trick is how do I make a, a nice circle to uh, cut that out of an 11 inch circle? Well, <clears throat> if you don't have a big compass at home where you can use that to scribe a line, what I did, and I just took a, an ordinary bolt and I tack welded it to kind of the centerpiece of my steel there, and then measured out from there, a radius of five and a half inches on each side. And then to draw the circle, I just took a, ran a piece of wire out of my gun. You can use string or anything else. Uh, the wire was just handy and I used that. Uh, tie a piece of wire around, the, around that stud that's sticking up and the other piece around the, my marker. And you know, of course got my 11 inches when I fastened it all together and just scribed my, uh, my cut line. Very simple, as you can see it's a, did a it's a pretty nice, pretty nice circle, way better than I could just do by hand for sure. Uh, I'm gonna use the same premise when I, I'm gonna use a plasma cutter to cut that out. Uh, and I'm gonna do, essentially do the same thing. I'm just gonna tie a piece of wire or string or what have you uh, to the bolt and out to where my cut's gonna be and do the same thing with the, with the plasma torch. And if luck is on my side, I'll have a nice perfect circle to drop right down in there and tack in place. So, so let's, uh, let's give it a shot and see how this all works out. All right, we've got our piece cut out. That's gonna be the, basically the bottom of our ash catching uh, hub. Um, you know, these are old, beat up, pretty rusty and grimy ribs, so uh, you always wanna weld on the cleanest possible surface. We are using, continuing like we did on the first part, uh, using flux cord wire, which really helps us get overcome a lot of dirt and crud, uh, but it still wouldn't hurt to take a wire brush, and that's what I've done. I just took a wire brush kind of around where my contact points are gonna be, just to get it as reasonably clean I'm just going to drop this inside, and once it's down in there and positioned, I'm just going to tack weld it in place, and we've got our our ash our ash catcher all uh, all all done and ready to go. All right, so let's just get that tack in place, and we'll get this show on the road. All right, we've got our tack welded in place, so, so our ash catcher, you gotta say that carefully, our ash catcher is ready to go. All we have to do now is actually take the fire pit part, set it right on top, you can see it's good and sturdy, and we've got ourselves a fire pit or barbecue, whatever you want. All that remains to be done now is to clean it up real good, get some heat resistant paint, make it look pretty, and you're ready for your fire pit, barbecue, however you want to end up using it. So hope you enjoy and we'll see you next time on MIG Men Day.
<laughs> that was Monday, by the way. <laughs> Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every MIG Monday.